Welcome to the Ajax Football Club mid-season review. Joining me tonight is the senior coach, Marty Basque. Marty, welcome. Thanks, Fetz. Good to be here, mate. Good to have you, Marty. Now, sitting seventh on the ladder at the halfway point, four wins, five losses, um, only two points behind fourth and a bit of percentage. What, what positives do you take out of the first half of the season? Look, uh, quite a few, to be honest. Uh, I think the, the main thing this year, um, it's been challenging at times. Um, look, we've probably, when I... Probably have to take a step back and, and look at you know, probably 18 months ago when I first took over the, the role as coach. We, you know, we lost some significant players um, that had played for you know considerable amounts of time. You know, the likes of Gary Bleed and Ari Luski, Ritterman, you know, Josh Ludsky last year was overseas, Warren Steinberg last year was overseas, uh, Jared White, the Ruckman. So um, it's meant that, that we've we've had to turn over. Um, a lot of youth and a, and a lot of guys playing. Um, off the top of my head last year, we had uh, around a dozen players that debut. Uh, this year already, we're at four with Nisabon, Cohen, Barron, um, and Goody, um, uh, Daniel Goodman. So uh, it's been interesting um, in the sense that, or rather exciting, that we get to see what else is coming through um, and play some players. The big talking point among supporters has been the midfield role of David Fagan this year. Having only kicked 100 points twice this year, do you endeavour to perhaps play him a little bit more forward in the second half of the year? Oh, uh, look, that, that's an interesting one because, again, um, you know, you, you look at what we've lost in terms of midfielders um, and in terms of, you know, it's all very well um, to suggest that, you know, you can, you can put someone in the goal square and, and then, you know, hope they're going to kick goals, but we've got to get it to it. Um, and, you know, that's a fundamental principle in footy that's never changed. So. You know, our, our key area of our midfield and our, and our depth in our midfield is something that, you know, we've really got to work on, we've really got to get better. Um, you know, uh, I guess the argument to, to that point is, you know, there's, there was games last year where, you know, Dave was still kicking, you know, six plus goals and having it 30 times, so he's still got the capability. So, to the supporters, um, you know, uh, I certainly think that, you know, he's still getting four or five shots on goal. Um, you know, obviously we'd like the conversion rate to be a little bit better, but I believe that Dave, for, for mine, is a player that you've got to take to the game. Um, I think he's much better when he's involved in the game. I think that he's been able to add a bow, sorry, a string to his bow this season that's been really valuable. Um, and last season, and particularly the second half of last year, where I think he showed people that um, he's not just a stay-at-home forward, he's worked really hard on his game. So from my perspective, I think he's added an extra dimension to our, to our, um, to our team. And you've got to look at it sometimes from an opposition's perspective and if, you, if you're coaching against us and you've got to always, whilst playing someone in the square might appear to be the obvious and, and nice, but the key component to that is if it's not working, well, what do you do next? And, you know, in, in days gone by, David would probably sit in the goal square compete against two or three players and um, that would be it for the day. Now the backmen tell me they don't get a big enough rap. So well, they do. They do from. They do certainly do from me because they're very important. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, DC or Ben Calmus in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, in the goal square. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting one. I'll probably go DC there. Sorry, PK, but um, yeah, I think DC's ability on. You know, his body works pretty good, um, but if BK could you know get his jukes up and potentially mark it, then obviously BK. So. Oh, could you go a draw? But I probably already said DC, didn't I? So I'd probably have to stick with that one. He's got an AFL standard kick in the senior side, or close to it. Well, Dave Fame would probably like to think he does. Um, there's probably no doubt about that. Um, kick. Uh, well, we've got a few that are interesting. Nick Mark's long kick you know, is very vital. Um, Ash Kelt's short kicks, very good. So I guess a combination of those two. Um, uh, Jake Blue's set shots are, are extremely good as well. Um, so. I think there's some attributes there, um, you know, um, it was funny actually, just off air before you, you were telling me you should, I should say Ben Calmus, but I, I thought that was rude, so I didn't want to say that. I did not say that. Uh, uh, AFL standard, set of hands. Ah, very good. Again, David Fagan would like to think it's him, so a lot of this just goes down to self-belief, which Dave has a lot of. You mentioned that training session before we went away to the bye. Uh, a bit of fun and games, which, which was good to see, uh, the players had a an mm -hmm. AFL colours or AFL jumpers night. Yeah. Um, but talk us through your, your it has to be said, uh, abysmal display in front of goal um, at the end of training there. Abysmal. You don't like that one? No, no. Do you want me to critique your game now? <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so talk me through your first quarter last week. 
My first quarter. Yeah. Were you watching? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I actually thought it was okay. Well, oh. I hit uh, this more. This more. This more than got the mind for you. Just me. <laughs> just yeah. Just, just me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in all fairness, um, well, fair to say I've been kicking the footy for a little while, but um, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was. But I was more concerned about Chuck, the, the, the fact that uh, I've uh, I've had a set shot for the best part of oh, gosh, I don't know, four or five years maybe. The, the hamstring hamstrings were screaming at me when I was lining up, but I just thought I had to do it, and. Uh, Oh, 20, 20 metres out, do you reckon, in front? Ah, uh, 35, oh. slight angle, breeze coming through, and then this car at the last minute right. was flashing its lights <laughs> behind, the, behind the goal, so it completely put me off, but, you know, a lot of you know, All the elements against you. Mate, and I was just did it well. I just thought I did well to get it there, um, but it just didn't come back, but, you know, the, the Jake Lou one was really disappointed that we put up on Twitter, because, you know, that, that's someone in the prime of their career, and... Now, mine, mine went through for a point. What did Jake's do? I think it went off the side of the boot and yeah. out of bounds on the wing. Mate, he owned a Collins trip. <laughs> it, was, it was straight off to the side. It, it's a shame we didn't get uh, all the set shots on camera because your, one of your assistant coaches, uh, Brendan Devlin, was uh, very happy, happy with his efforts. Yeah, and unfortunately, Brendan's no longer with us. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we wish him all the best. <laughs> well, buddy, thanks for joining us. And, and again, good luck on, uh, on the weekend against Fitzroy. A massive game here at Albert Park, Oval 9, uh, Garrett's Morgan Oval, of course, at 2pm. Thanks for joining us.